Wow. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So what do you know about dim sum? Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Samara. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste some food and have a great time on Taste This. I bet you I can eat this whole thing. Here you have it, my version of the duck. Right, thanks for having me here today. It's thanks an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me Grab a fresh lobster, cook it, and this is a lobster roll. One of my favorite events, the Big Apple Barbecue. I'm Chef Joseph Simonet. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this. So, Joe, now talk to me a little bit about the Firebird Restaurant, a staple here in New York City. Been around, what, about 12 years or so? Yeah, about 15 now. 15 so. years? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is the type of cuisine? Now, some people might call it eclectic Russian cuisine. Some people might just say authentic, but it's not really authentic, is it? No, it's, uh, it's an early Russian cuisine where the, when you had the Russian czars, so the kings and queens, they would mm -hmm. bring the French chefs from Paris to come in to influence the traditional Russian cooking. Mm. And so you get that French twist onto the dishes, and that's what we try to recreate here. Interesting. Now, we're going to taste some dishes today, right? Joe, these dishes look fabulous. They really do. Artfully presented. Uh, the smell, I, I can smell each aroma coming off of each dish. Uh, from the, uh, the from the beef, from the pollen on the duck breast over to the keeve and just of course this borscht course. have this wonderful kind of beet aroma just kind of coming mm -hmm. up at the nose and then voila you have the braised brisket there borscht is typically served like this but of course it, it should always come with with a side of sour cream kind of balance the flavor of course right? of course uh, it's traditionally served with a sour cream here we keep it on the side cuz not a, not everyone likes sour cream and some people are lactose intolerant or on a diet Mm -hmm. So this is actually a uh, red borscht, so it's made predominantly with beets, and we serve it with a slow braised beef brisket there. Now, Joe, the chicken keeve, now, uh, that word has actually really circulated the food service industry with parties. You know, there's always chicken keeve on the menu, but here at Firebird, you get it, you know, artfully presented, right? This is a little different than what you'd normally see. What's in this, baby, when I cut it open? Of course, well, it's uh, traditionally stuffed, but then we also add a couple other things in there. We put in some arugula, baby spinach, or the herbs and garlic and as well as the butter that's on the inside of there. Vegetables are nice, uh, nicely al dente, seasoned well with salt and pepper. Wow, very flavorful. I love you. Joe, fabulous uh, treat here. Thanks so much for having me here. The dishes were fantastic, artfully presented, and of course they taste wonderful. All right, thanks for having me Good. here at the Firebird. I'm glad you enjoyed it. 46th Street, NYC. Check it out, but we're not finished yet because I'm heading over to the test kitchen and whipping up some more great recipes, so don't go anywhere. Taste this. You know, doing a show on vegetables, uh, one vegetable that always comes to mind is tomatoes. Here are heirloom tomatoes. Uh, one thing I love about heirloom tomatoes are the color, the taste, and the texture. So we're going to take some capellini pasta and put it into our already salted boiling water. Now, what we're going to be doing is a caramelized and goat cheese timbal with tomatoes. And what we need to do is get the skin off of these tomatoes first uh, before we can go to the next level. Now, we're going to take the tomatoes and do what's, uh, do what's called the score. I've already scored that one. Let's, let's get this one. It's basically putting an X in one side, an X in the other side. And the same on the other as well. You don't want to go too deep and you don't want to go too long around the tomato bowl here, grab our other bowl. Just get some cold water. You can put some ice in there if you want. And this is going to just shock our tomatoes, which will make it easier to peel the, the skin off. And if you look closely here, uh, you can start to see some of the skin coming out. We're not, we're not quite there yet. Uh, just make sure that the water is not boiling. Very important. Let's grab this one. You can see this a little bit better. You notice the skin kind of comes off itself. You know, but it's got a little time yet. Let, let it really peel off. Right now, our capellini pasta is done. It takes about a four-minute cook time. You never want to overcook capellini pasta or any other pasta, for that matter. What we are going to do is take a little bit of oil and just spray a little bit in our pasta. Next, what we're going to do is start to take our onions. Now, today I've used a mixture of onions. Red and white actually work really good. You could have used shallots if you'd like. Uh, we're not really going to go there today with the shallots. Although you could have, but today is not going to be a day for that. So what we want to do is just peel our onions. And what, we, what we're going to do is julienne them. And julienne them just means that basically a thin slice. Okay. Now you want to get thin slices on the onion. Of 
flavor, their sweet flavor that the onions get when you cook them down. They lose that acidic property and they pick up a nice sweet texture. Okay, so we're spraying some olive oil in here. And we're gonna take a spider. This is a handy dandy tool if you don't wanna stick your fingers in there or uh, never take a fork because you'll just pierce the tomatoes. And what we're gonna do is throw them into that cold water that we spoke about. And we're gonna let them rest because what we wanna do is take off the skin. The only way to take off that skin uh, is basically kind of let them cool down. I love you. And we're just going to leave them over there. And you can start to see the bottoms peeling off and stuff like that. We're going to take all these onions, put them into the pan. I love this dish. This is like an incredible dish. And don't be scared to put a, even more extra virgin olive oil in there if you need to. While that's happening, we're going to take our tomatoes. And what you're going to do is very gently take your tomatoes, and you can see that you're taking off the skin, and that's what you're left up. That's what you're left with. Take our other tomatoes now. Just take the skin off very gently. Next, what we're going to do is throw a little bit of this orange peel that we have here, which is going to now give us a citrus texture. It's actually going to marry itself with all of these onions and actually cook down really nice. As you can see we started to cook down these onions. They're starting to get caramelized. Again, we still got a ways to go because with this particular dish, uh, it really must be cooked down good. And what we're going to do is take our avocado and we're going to just dice little chunks of the avocado that we're going to mix in with, the, in with the tomato salad as well. Now, if you don't know how to cut an avocado, let me just give you a quick lesson. Cut around to the sides, move it over like this, and you have this annoying pit in the center comes right out. Now to keep the avocado from turning brown, you can keep this pit, let's say you make guacamole, you throw the pit in with the finished guacamole and place a cover on it and the avocados will not turn brown. We're just going to take some big chunks of our avocado and you don't want to add too much to this because what happens is if you add too, much, too many ingredients you don't get the proper uh, taste of, of, of the tomatoes. Sp spoon it out. You want to try to keep the avocado diced. The best way to dice the avocado and kind of just Leave it without getting mushy, just do it the way I did it. All right, so now our onions are just about where we want them. They're caramelized, they're cooking down, they're soft, and they've picked up the sweet flavor. We've cooked that down and that looks good. We'll get ourselves a plate. Now what we're gonna do is take some of the pasta that we have, and we're gonna put a little bit of pasta in there. Not much, you have to have a little starch in there. Now once you add the goat cheese, you immediately take the pan off the fire. Now what you do is very gently mix up the goat cheese and the onions and the pasta. Make sure that it's evenly distributed. We're going to find just a small piece and put it into the center. Onions and goat cheese are, are, are a marriage made in heaven. That, that's number one. Number two, now when you add the starch in there, what you're going to end up doing is making a little nestled bed for the tomatoes to sit into. Now what we're going to do with the tomatoes here is we're going to grab a little bit of chili oil that we have, put them around, and we don't put the flour of the salt on there yet. We're going to toss the tomatoes around that are nice and cool, then we're going to put them in the center. This is good stuff now. Your chili oil. Just put it over the center of the dish. A little color. Now you want to take a little bit of edible greens that we have here. And what you want to do is just put it, put it on the sides of the plate. Two without being overkill. Push it in. You want everything kind of nice, tight in the center. And next you want to take a little bit of avocados. Three. You know, keep the balance of flavors are important with this, folks. You know, you don't want to overpower. Uh, the dish, but the avocados seem to balance out the acid uh, in the actual cheese itself. You could put one here. Okay, now we're going to add the flour de sal like we said we were going to. These are flour de sal flakes. They're a little larger uh, than the regular flour de sal. I guess it can come in all different sizes, but I'm used to having a more uh, crystallized, small rounds. Uh, these are nice flakes, really thin, and you just put it over the tomato. 
So here you have it, our tomato timbal. On to our next recipe, which would be root vegetable. Well, vegans may not like this dish because it does have animal protein in it. I this love next you. dish is going to be grilled vegetables, but a little bit different than you've normally had grilled vegetables before. Now, all these vegetables come from California. Let's go into the different kinds of baby root vegetables that we have here. We have haricot verts, um, and they're much thinner than a string bean. Basically, the cleaning is just to cut off the annoying tip that, that used to be here. I cut that off earlier. Uh, baby yellow uh, patty pan of squash and zucchini. We have uh, thin baby zucchinis here. We have red. We have baby Yukon or fingerling potatoes. Uh, we have cauliflower, baby cauliflower. We have candied striped beets, which are always a good additive, nice crunch to your vegetable dish. Baby root carrots, goat cheese, and we're going to be using herb steak, or just fresh oregano. Really fresh is really the way you want to go. And we have some New Zealand sea salt today, which comes in whole crystal form. Uh, and then we just crack this up here and twist the top on. So what we're going to do is talk to a little bit about the cook time of these vegetables. They all have different cook times, but we can mix them all at the same time. So that's what we're going to do is season them before they actually go on the flat type griddle behind us in which we're going to be cooking. And then we'll mix them with goat cheese and that'll be the end. You can take it in and do it at home if you'd like. Now these onions are just regular onions. They're going to act as the bed of our grilled vegetable. It's going to give it nice sweet flavor. So we're going to take some olive oil, take your olive oil, put it down on your pan like that. And then take your onions first and put them down. And you're only going to turn these onions twice. It's going to be one side. It's going to get really nice brown color. And then the other side, that's going to act as the base for our vegetable dish today. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil, put this in the vegetables, and we're going to take a little bit of salt and just give it a toss. You always want to coat the vegetables all over with olive oil because you don't want to run into a situation where um, the vegetable is not coated with oil and it's not going to caramelize on the grill like it shouldn't give you that nice flavor that we're looking for. Or just use, you could use your hands. Carrots down first, followed by our zucchini. Now each one of these has got different down first. Put your patty pans, take your baby cauliflower. I love vegetables, you know, especially if they're cooked like this. Now. We're just going to check our onions here. we still got some ways to go. And the vegetables are looking good. We're going to turn over these zucchinis first. They have the quickest cook time. Nice brown color. What we're going to do is remove those first. Now we're going to go over to our patty pan, squash, and zucchini. They're next to get out. Looking good. That's exactly the brown color that we want. We're just about ready to go. Let's get some more stuff off the fire here. Carrots especially, we are finished with that. Notice how nice and brown the carrots are. All right, we can put the remaining ingredients. And putting that right at the center, which is now nice and soft, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Try to keep it in its shape because when it gets flimsy, you know, it can go out of shape on you. And we have our vegetables very hot. We're going to throw back into the bowl. We're going to take one spoon of our goat cheese. We don't want to overdo it. And give that a mix with a little bit of salt. And of course we talked about that fresh oregano. Put a little bit on there. Nothing overpowering. Every now and again you'll bite into a piece that'll be really nice and delicious. And mix this. This is going to be a great recipe. I usually put the carrots down first because, you know, they'll balance itself. Plus, you can fill the center uh, in with different things, your potatoes, your patty pans. Go around to it with. Don't forget your Harry Colvers, which I like to leave them on the longest. So here you have it, a quick and easy vegetable dish, but we can't forget our sun-dried tomato pesto. And what we do is just want a little acid, kind of kick this flavor into another direction. Take a little bit and smear it on one side, take a little bit and smear it on the other. If you want it, it's there on the plate. If not, no big deal. Uh, and I think that'll bring out the colors and the flavors of the dish as well. That'll do it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching Taste This TV. You. I'm your host, Chef Joseph. And remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.